Well, hello, church. Thanks for joining me. I hope you're enjoying the warm weather outside. It is beautiful out, and it is classic Kamloops plus 30. So I hope you're enjoying it. I'm wearing a t-shirt because it is just that hot out. So thank you for joining. Uh, my name's Tim. I'm just on staff here, and I just want to give you a quick update, as per usual, on uh, two things today. First, uh, our finances, and, uh, and secondly, it's the, uh, the fishing breach that we had uh, a while back. Just kind of give you an update of what's happened there. So uh, with that all said, uh, let's get into our finally monthly finances. Our budget for our, our finances for the month of April were $156,000 were budgeted, but saw $139,000 come in. So we're a bit shy. Uh, that puts us about 92% of where we expected to be. However, the expenditures were uh, 149 budget, actually 147. So we spent a little less. We got in less at the end of the day. We expected to be at a $7,000 gain for the month. Actually, we saw a $8,000 loss, but don't worry. Don't worry. Why? Because year to date, that's what matters. Uh, we do our best to try and plan out throughout the month when expenses are going to come, uh, when we're going to have certain events, when we expect revenue, but that kind of fluctuates. So the really important number, uh, the biggest gauge is kind of this year to date number, which is our operating results for year to date. So all the way to the year, right from fiscal year starting in July. So the income for the budget for the year was $1.42 million. Uh, we actually saw 1.46 million. So that's a bit of an increase, about 102% increase. Sorry, a 2% increase over that. And then expenditures were 1.46, uh, but they're actually 1.40. So uh, our expenses were about 97% of what they expected to be, which at the end of the day uh, puts us at an expected budget of $33,000 loss. However, we are sitting at a $60,000 gain. So that is... Amazing. That's wonderful. We got another year. I, I, I said a few weeks ago in, uh, in, my, um, in my Sunday morning that um, this has been such a faithful church. God's been faithful and Casey, you've responded uh, to his faithfulness by being faithful. And so we see that here. So we're so grateful for his provision work, trusting that God uh, will uh, carry us through the end of the year and that we'll finish strong financially uh, for the end of the year, which is the end of July or the end of June rather. Okay, uh, the restricted funds, again, the, the, the uh, previous slide was talking just on operational piece, which means uh, all of our rental, all of our donations, all of our uh, interest of, loan, of, of monies we have out. Um, it includes all those things that come together, even fees that we paid, all that operational stuff comes together. Um, this is just the restricted portion of it. So the care connections uh, for this year was 63,000. Missions and outreach was 75,000. Capital reserve for 57,000 for a total of $200,000 over and above uh, the general operating or rather the operating funds that came in for this year. Okay. Uh, again, this slide becomes a little bit more important as we go into the capital campaign. But for right now, just an FYI, we're seeing about $57,000 in the capital reserve fund as we head into uh, the capital campaign uh, for this fall. Okay. Um, update really quickly on the data breach, uh, rather the phishing breach that we had uh, not too long ago, a few months back. Now, if you remember, last September... Um, we all of a sudden start emailing you and you might've gotten that email randomly saying, hey, if someone's asking you for money, uh, do not accept it, it's a scam. We don't, do, we don't ask for money in that way, uh, please ignore it. Um, so I just wanna give you up to speed where we are since that moment and kinda let you know what we've gotten from there. So like I said, what happened was uh, last September we had a scam. Uh, it was a bit chaotic because we didn't know what was happening, but we were very quickly able to try to lock everything down. But we had to email everybody, let them know that it was a scam and that we obviously wouldn't be asking for funds in that way. Um, so since then, we've been trying to work really hard to figure out kind of what happened and to make sure, to ensure that this doesn't happen again. Where, what happened, and, and I kind of do a, 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 a kind of a... Uh, evaluation and analysis and investigation as to what happened uh, and what we make sure it doesn't happen again. And that investigation both uh, involved third-party services as well as our own internal uh, IT services as well. So we did the investigation and we've determined uh, a couple things. So first off, uh, it was that it was a phishing breach, not a data breach, and that's important to distinct. Why? A phishing breach uh, plays on uh, on the engineer of abuse of people. In other words, it, it plays off the emotions of people, and it gets into a system. 
Uh, a data breach by virtue is, it, or by in, in, uh, in contrast, is almost like brute force. They can hack into your system and have free reign in your system. That's not what happened. It was a phishing breach, which means that somebody had, under a pseudonym, under false pretenses, had limited access to uh, the system that was there. Secondly, to determine is that they did indeed have limited access. So they didn't have car launch access to the entire system, the entire database, but there were certain isolated pieces of information that they had access to uh, based off the profile that they had entered in. And the person's profile was limited in scope. And finally, finally, uh, thirdly, uh, they were there for a very, very short time. We were able to ascertain exactly when they went into the system, what profiles they looked at. Uh, we were able to figure out exactly how long they were there for, and then what mood they moved on to, and then they came out and went back in again. And so we were able to very, very specifically, in conjunction with the third party uh, support, as well as our internal support, figure out exactly what happened in that. So. It was a very, very short window of time, uh, and they, it was very limited in the scope. And finally, it wasn't a brute force data breach, but rather it was a phishing scam, which just gave them undue access uh, to the system. That being said, we are so grateful that it wasn't worse. Uh, it could have been much worse, and it wasn't, so we're grateful for that. But we realize that this was uh, this is important, and 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 so even though it could have been worse, even if it wasn't worse, it could have been worse. And so from that, uh, from the investigation, we have actually uh, put three things in place to ensure. Uh, moving forward that we minimize the risk of this again. And first off, uh, we're doing technical training. And so this technical training just teaches our people, teaches uh, the system what it means to have to be fished and what to look for in that process. So to try and stay on top of the latest scams that are always emerging. A, a church our size, an organization our size, an organization that's based off of goodwill and trust like we are, um, is, is vulnerable to this. And so we want to make sure we're training well for that uh, to make sure we're staying up to date with all the most recent scams that are available. Secondly, is process changes. So with this, we've learned that there were some processes in our system that were vulnerable toward uh, an attack like this. And so we have made recommendations at all levels of the organization and instituted uh, and implemented new strategies or new ways of doing things to make sure there's no gaps in the system all the way through and all the way down throughout the entire organization to ensure, again, that we are up to speed and we are we don't have any gaps within our processes. And finally, uh, there is technical infrastructure that we're layering over top and that we're looking at to determine what what is needed to, to, uh, to fill in the gaps from a, even the tech side in terms of these scams. Now, I would just remind you again, uh, we live in a world that needs Jesus, which means that we are never going to be in a world that's going to get, a we are going to get attacked again. And so we want to stay as much as possible to stay on top of that, to be educated, to have everything we have. And so just pray for us, pray for protection, pray that uh, we, the, the attacks against us are, minim, uh, are minimal and that this is the last time that we are scammed. Um, but Maybe you are affected by this, and maybe this is uh, you're still working through some of that. Uh, we as a church want to come alongside you and make right whatever we can. And so if you have been affected by this, please reach out to me, uh, Tim H at KAC.ca. I'd love to hear uh, what happened and how we can come alongside you uh, because your trust matters. Uh, the trust that this organization runs off of trust in in sense that um, we, we value that and we want to make sure we honor that trust. And so if you've been affected by it or you have concerns or you have questions or you're not sure, I, I'd love to talk to you. Please call me at the church, email me, timhkc.ca, and I'd love to journey with you and see however we can help. So with that said, church, thanks for joining for the few minutes here and please enjoy the summer. God bless.